Hello and welcome to Extra Time uh, with me, Gary James, and Lisa Smith. Hi, Gary. Hello. Uh, before we introduce our guests today, um, let me just tell you that we have a, an email address. And if you would like to suggest any guests you'd like to see on the show, or if we're not talking about your sport, then please get in touch. It's Extra Time at BigCentre.tv. Right, our guest today then, uh, from the world of football and the, uh, the world of golf, uh, first of all, football, we have Dave Barnett. Dave, welcome. How are you doing, Gary? Thank you. Former player, of course. And from the world of golf, golf professional, um, we have Gary Alice. Gary, okay. welcome. Now, um, guys, I, I wasn't sure what to wear because golf is a passion, so I've got the golf top on today. And, and Dave, I couldn't wear the football strip, really, but there's a picture of me in a blues kit just to make you That'll feel do. at home. That's okay. And there's me there. <laughs> and there you go. There all right, actually, actually, Gary. <laughs> That's what I used to play right back in the dressing room for the Blues. <laughs> Male model. <laughs> so we're all happy now. Brilliant. Um, let's, um, let's talk golf. We, we flipped the coin before and um, golf won. So we're going to start with, with Gary. Um, and, and guys, please chip in. That's how we work. Chip. Now, Is that a pun? Chip. chip. <laughs> I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're away. Sharp. 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 Gary, uh, PGA Master Pro. PGA Cup captain 2007 and, and nine, yep. as well. Yep. Um, this is the interesting one. Slovak Republic national golf coach. I am. Yes, it's uh, it's something I was asked to uh, to go out to Slovakia by the RNA because I do some work uh, for the RNA in golf development, where either uh, the game is completely new or it hasn't been played for many years, like some African countries mm. and things. Uh, and on the back of this visit, I was asked by the Slovak Golf Association, would I become their national coach? Um, they didn't have any golf courses at all. Um, they had a few golfers who crossed the border and played in Austria um, or, or went to the Czech Republic where they have. But of course, when they were behind the Iron Curtain and part of the Soviet Union, um, they really weren't allowed to play much golf. Uh, but anyway, back at the end of the 1990s, first golf courses started. I went there in 2008 yeah. um, and came back so the RNA could give them some money and I say on the back of that. And slowly we've gone on and developed into quite a good side in the last World Championships. They, the very first World Championships they played in out of 70 odd countries for the men, they were last. But we've got up now out of 70 countries, they're finishing about 25th, 26th. So it's quite an achievement over... 15 years yeah. or so, so since. Because I know when, when, I, when I, I found out about that, and, and, and I, I was trying to wrap my brain to think, do I know a pro golfer that comes from Slovakia and, and couldn't come up with one? No, I mean, in, in terms of the pros that they've got, that basically their success so far has been in, in amateur golf, mm. um, but they they have some coaches, and in <laughs> fact, one of their team players has done the uh, AGMS golf course at right. Birmingham University oh, okay. here and uh, he's now a member of our PGA and has aspirations to try and get on to the tour so mm. he'll be playing some Euro Pro mm. golf this season a lad called Martin Tavada okay. and uh, one of the one of the team is a very young player he's only just 15 but he played in the Qatar Masters uh, Jakob Hinder and he uh, he lives in Qatar uh, but actually got a start in the in the tournament mm -hmm. where he ran, ran uh, a, a month or so ago yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So we're, we're moving forward. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll find out a bit more about what you're doing now in a sec. But let, let's go back. Um, you turned pro in 1973. I did, yes. yeah. And that. Um, but when did you first pick up a club? Because we've got a picture of you now with, with your dad, Peter, the, the yeah. voice of golf. Yeah. <laughs> and, and your grandfather. Can yeah. you remember this picture being taken? I can. Um, I certainly can. The picture was taken for the Bournemouth Evening Echo, which is where we'd lived. My granddad was the pro at Ferndown Golf Club, and dad was the pro at Parkstone, along with his uh, brother, my uncle Alec. They were joint pros then. And the photo was taken uh, at the beginning of May, um, 1963. Uh, I was 10 years old, uh, just before my 10th birthday. And um, it was to promote Father had re-signed with Slazenger Golf Equipment and they were having a, um, a, a promotion for the start of the new season for the 1963 golf season. And, and there's the second picture we want to show because we have the Alice Golf Dynasty. <laughs> yeah. um, this one, it's obviously yourself, uh, Dad Peter. And is that, that's your son? Yeah, it's, it's my son Craig. And uh, on that one we were at Wentworth uh, doing some, um, uh, some promotion for a cancer 
research yeah. charity and uh, my son is a pro in South Wales. So we actually cover four generations and the Alice family have been members of the PGA almost since the whole of the um, instigation of the PGA. So from First World War onwards, we have, a, have a, mem uh, a member of the association. And I think one of the fascinating things is that a lot of people don't know, but one of the things that I find, Dad's got all sorts of records, if you like, yeah. but one of the things that I think is the most fascinating is that he's actually known or worked with on every single open champion since 1900. Wow. Oh. Is that some record? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So for 114 years, uh, and the first one was Harry Varden, who died, but Dad was only a little boy when yeah. Varden died, but he'd actually met him with my granddad, Percy. But yeah, it's, it's, it's good. And, yeah. you know, it's been fantastic to have a grandfather and a father who were Ryder Cup players. And oh, the, everybody the, the knows history. all oh, Yeah, we, we could probably do a dozen shows yeah. just, <laughs> just talking about the, the Alice <laughs> Golf di uh, dynasty. Yeah. And, and finally, um, out of the photographs you very kindly sent over, I have to show this one, Gary because it's with, it's with the, the Irish man himself, Mr. Terry Wogan. When was this taken and what event or tournament was this? Well, this, this one was uh, a prize giving at a pro-am where I happened to play okay and, and won the pro-am. And, and Terry has been a very, very close and dear friend of my dad for years. Uh, and dad said, uh, dad was part sponsoring the event with, with quite a big company. And he'd asked Terry, would he come down on this particular day and give the the prizes out and as luck would have it or whatever I, I managed to knock in a couple of good putts and managed to win myself so that was that uh, and that was 1996 actually that, that, oh, that, that so, you've got a great memory for all, <laughs> all the facts and figures and stuff <laughs> uh, do you play golf Dave you know I, I, I lived in in Florida for a period of time and uh, some gorgeous courses we were talking earlier but uh, I'm not particularly great I should have played more frequently because yeah. uh, normally, obviously, as a footballer, and you must have, and, and have taught loads and played with loads of footballers. Yeah, it certainly. seemed to be certainly back in, in the day mm. that you played football, you played golf. Yeah, it was so much free time in the afternoons. Sometimes in late afternoons, a lot of the guys, after training, used to play you know, three to three or four times a week. Yeah. You know, every now and again, I'd pop along. You know, <laughs> hence me still being at 28. I think. So, <laughs> <laughs> But we can uh, rectify that, you know, a couple can. of lessons. Yeah, yeah we, can, we can sort I'm, that. I'm happy you, to go along yeah. with that, <laughs> definitely. definitely. <laughs> There you go. That's, that's enough you don't get up every day. But when, when you started then, um, were, you, were you a club pro or were you a tour pro? Uh, really, when I started, I, I didn't actually play very much in my teens, although I'd started from a very small boy. My granddad taught me because everybody said, oh, your dad taught you. But actually, dad was away playing tournament golf. Mm. He was never at home. So my granddad taught me to play. But I actually, because it was there all the time, I didn't really play from being about 12 to 18. Mm. Then I started, didn't uh, have a have a job. I just left school, didn't want to go to university. So uh, I was lucky enough to be offered an assistance job at Travaux and really started and tried to learn to play from there. Desperately wanted to be a tour player. In my attempts for that, I never reached the heights of playing that I would love to have done. Um, but on the back of that, I found I seemed to be able to learn quite a lot about how to play and was able to sort of communicate it to others. Um, so really, I set off down the road of coach, club professional, and away we went from there. So it just took me in a different way. So I spent a lot of time with players, working with them on the other side of the ropes. And, and, and then there's so many, you know, for, obviously I'm, I'm a passionate golfer, as we can see, you know, <laughs> all the gear. Um, and no idea. But, <laughs> yeah, I know, I don't, you don't play golf, do you? I do, I you, do really badly, do but yeah. Pitch I've had put. some lessons. No, no, I've had some lessons. I can see we've I got can... a four ball already <laughs> set here, you know. At the Belfry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. why not? <laughs> the well, my putting's excellent, but my driving's not so good. But I've been taught that you, what is it, you drive for show and put for day. That's what I was told. So uh, I, I can't catch the guys on the distance, but on the putting, yeah, yeah, I can knock a few yeah. in. So. But back to the coaching, there's so many different tips advice you read the golf magazines i know you're one of the top 25 golf is it golf monthly golf, golf monthly, monthly have coaches. A top 25 coaches um, yeah. uh, but what's your golf philosophy and what's the, if you like what's the one thing you'd say to the average club golfer i think i think the, the, the key to being able to play and enjoy it is try and get some good fundamentals so you know hold the thing properly get some basic information uh, and it's very easy and even when i see and go to tournaments you see tour players and they seem to spend an awful lot of time messing around on the backswing and funnily enough in 40 years I haven't hit a golf ball on the backswing you hit it at the moment you that hit moment, it yeah. so actually just working on impact 
thinking about the target, playing towards the target, trying to use... At the end of the day, the lump on the end of the stick hits it. <laughs> these hang on and these swing. And, you know, if you can point yourself and you can draw it back and, and start to play. But really, just lining up, it's a simple tip. Pick something just in front of the ball, maybe a foot in front of the golf mm. ball. Line up behind. Don't mess around for too long. Pick that line. Get on where you want to go. Point the club at it and then try and whack the golf ball over the top of that. And, you know, go from there. Uh, you could say he would say this, wouldn't he? Um, <laughs> but... Uh, I think for anybody, if they can find a little bit of time, get a little bit of instruction, get some good fundamentals, build a rapport with a coach, and, and you'll have much more fun. Brilliant. We're going to talk more in the second half, but for now, that's half time and extra time. So welcome back. This is Extra Time with me, Gary James, and uh, PR guru, owner of Prepared PR, is uh, Lisa Smith and sports journalist as well. And also on the sofa, professional golfer Gary Ellis and uh, former player Dave Barnett. So uh, we were talking before the break, uh, Gary, um, about coaching tips and your philosophy. Uh, a couple of things before we, we talk a bit more football with, with, with Dave. Um, you're known as the king of swing. Yeah. Um, now, I know it's not for singing. <laughs> no. <laughs> so where does that come it's, from? It's not for swinging either. <laughs> <laughs> How did that come about? Um, basically, it came about because uh, when I was in Cornwall and I started to work with the PGA training young pros, um, the, the owner of one of the local newspapers down there, he was talking about it. We did a little interview about working for the PGA and he said, you truly are the king of the swing now. The and it, swing. The swing. Ah. So um, that's where it, it came about. And I kind of liked it, and a few people used it. So I, I sort of rather thought it was quite a good epithet. Uh. And they can put it on my gravestone <laughs> eventually as well. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's where, where it came, came from. from. Oh, okay. yeah. uh, bring us one up to date then. What are you up to now? I know you're doing, as you're doing a lot of coaching. Um, you've yeah. been out to Ghana as well. Yes, uh, that was as part of the RNA development. I've been to Israel, Ghana a few times mm. to work with their PGA. Uh, basically, I, I teach. I teach locally down the road um, at Lee Marston near the, okay. near the Belfry yeah. and Abbey Hotel. Oh, uh, in, those Redditch, are my, Abbey in Redditch Park. Abbey Park. Those yeah, are well, my two yeah. home bases for teaching, but obviously I do a fair amount of work abroad. Um, I do some refereeing for the Europro Tour. Uh, I do the commentary for the Europro Tour um, mm. when when the season's on for the highlights there. And uh, so yeah, life's busy and it's fun good. and everything. So yeah, it's 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 really good. And, and finally, your dad Peter Ellis, as we said, is the, the voice of golf. Is, is is a lovely man. He has such a dry sense of humour, and I just love it. Do you do you think you might follow there and end up maybe at the Beeb? I think, in all honesty, if you'd never say never to anything, and it would be lovely to do it. But I think the reality is, if if Dad had worked there and everything, it's quite difficult and quite a difficult decision. I know in the past you've got really well-known broadcasters and Dimblebys and all that, and it would be it would be lovely. But the little bit that I do that obviously is is for Sky. And, and let's be quite honest, you know, in terms of golf, sadly, the BBC has this next season or two oh, is course. going to be the last mm. golf that they have, yeah. unless mm. something happens. Well, let's hope something does happen and they do mm. it. Um, so, so for now, thank you, Talking Golf thank Gary. Thank you, pleasure. Um, on to football. And uh, we'll come back to you and to ask you about some of the players as well, because you must have been yeah, yeah, playing golf with a lot of the players. <laughs> but, but Dave, um, your footballing career, well, you were born in Birmingham. That's right, first yes, of all. Yes. Um, you, your youth career was at, was at Wolves, I understand. But you never signed for Wolves, did you? No, it's, it's, it wasn't the sort of the traditional run-in, um, as you see exposure now with some of the youngsters coming through the academy system. Um, I had a bend, desire and a passion to become a footballer. And it was an arduous route, to be honest with you, yeah. in, in getting there. Actually, it was to Wolverhampton for a short period, and then I got released, and then I went into to non-league football mm. for a period. Did you play for was it, um, Alf, Alf Church? Did you play for? for Alf Church? I played for for Bolmere, <laughs> and I played for Kidderminster. <laughs> Whoever have you? Yeah, and then, <laughs> then I went to London for a period, you know. Yeah. But as, again, I think from a young age, being brought up in Answorth, you know, I had a burning desire to to try and get there. Yeah. And um, as I said, I got released and I wrote off to a number of clubs. We didn't have emails those days, so I wrote off to a number of clubs when I was 16 and I saw all my other friends getting signed up. Yeah. And I thought my chance had passed me by, but I wrote to them and 
got uh, notes back and ran down the stairs wondering if they was going to get a trial or what have you. And um, it didn't happen for me at that age. But then I continued and went to London, lived in London and played non-league there. Mm. And, and your first pro with club was Colchester? Yes, I actually uh, got a phone call from a good friend of mine who supported me all the way through, David Bagley. Um, I've got a lot to thank him for um, and mentioned that I was in New Zealand at the time playing in New Zealand. <laughs> yeah. Got about. Yeah. Got about. Yeah, Have passport, will travel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> from Baldmere yeah. to New Zealand. That's right. I was playing in New Zealand uh, with actually David Regis, uh, oh, brother of Cyril, Cyril. Regis. Yeah. You know, so he got a phone call to come back and play for Barnet, and I got a phone call to come back to go and play for Colchester United, well, to go on trial. Yeah. So I went on trial, and I thought, this is my, my chance. You know, I've been waiting for for so long, and, uh, and Roger Brown was the manager at the time. Yeah. And uh, fortunately, that went really well, and he, and he signed me. Oh, well. And then, I know um, you, you ended up in Canada at some point, didn't you? Play, playing yeah. for the team, and I think <laughs> this is a great name for a football team, the Edmonton Brickmen. That's correct. Yeah. Only in Canada would you have a team called the Edmonton Brickmen. Yes, it was that yes. solid defence, you said. Solid defence. <laughs> <laughs> well, the guns are coming out in this show, aren't they? <laughs> So, how did you end up in Canada and, and what was the story behind the team and why were they called that? Right, the, I'm not sure why they were called that but I, I got a call in the off-season to go out there and um, it was through Justin Fashion at the time. Yeah. I, went, I went for a period and then came back and played um, for, for West Bromwich Albion for a short, short period again. Yeah. Um, but it was just an opportunity, I suppose. I, I'd been used to travelling and loved and was passionate about football. At that time, I hadn't really established myself. Mm. You know, so I, I saw this as a, another opportunity to, to, to push myself further and to see and then take the experience on board, really. Mm. Yeah. And, and as you mentioned, you played for the Baggies. Yeah. Um, you also were signed by Barry Fry. Yeah. Um, and, and, um, and, and that was for, and that, this is great because it's like Dave Barnett plays for Barnett. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> so you played for Barry. And then, uh, and then Barry signed, signed you again at Blues, didn't he? He did, right. yes. Yeah, so, I mean, I know that the, the Blues fans absolutely still, to this day, love, love Barry Fry. He's such a big mm -hmm. character, yeah. larger than life. But yeah. what was he like as a boss? Um, obviously, I had insight into him at, at Barnet. And there's so many stories with Stan Flashman, the chairman there at the time. And yeah. uh, I, I got so many situations, you know, where it was, it was fun. And there was a good camaraderie. What he, what he did have, and he showed at Barnet and both at Birmingham, is they obviously a larger than life personality. Mm. Um, so that and, it's, and he empowered the players. So he, by his own admittance, he, he's not a tactician, but he had an eye for a player. Yeah. And normally the players were strong characters, so they could deal with the occasion and they could put things right. Mm. Do you know? So uh, he had a knack of having creating the right environment, if you like. Yeah. 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 And, and whilst at Blues as well, you you, you played under uh, Trevor Francis. Yeah. For a yeah. short while. That's right. I mean, he's he's from what I know when I've met Trevor. He's a, he's a lovely guy, is he? Yeah. But as a manager, was, did, did, he, did he have what it, it takes to be a manager? Because he, he didn't last in management for too long, did he, Trevor? No, I mean, he was obviously an exceptional player. He was yeah. still the best player in training. Yeah. You know, he, was, you know he, was, he went to Italy as well, didn't he? And, he, mm. and management side, it didn't quite work out for him, did it? I think yeah. you have to be a, a, a type of character, a certain type of character and personality yeah. to be able to deal with, mm. with that and whether that really fitted with him. I'm not too sure with it. Is he too nice? He, 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 was a, he was a gentleman, he wasn't, I mean, he, he, he got his points across, but again, there's a certain resilience as a character you need to have yeah. as, as a manager. Yeah, yeah. and, and um, playing for Warsaw, of course, mm -hmm. um, which we know in, in, in just over a week's time, Warsaw are at Wembley, you've played at Wembley mm -hmm. in, was it 95? That's correct, yes. You played yeah. in, in the, yeah. in the uh, league, auto league trophy. Screen, it? it was against, auto windscreen, yeah. Yeah, That's against cool. Carlisle, that, yeah. That, that, that you weren't playing for Birmingham yeah, and that. Yeah. Um, so what, what those Warsaw players, first time in 127 years the club's got there, yeah. uh, in your experience, what's it like to play at Wembley and what can those guys e expect? Because obviously when you played, it was, it was the old Wembley. It was the Twin Tower Wembley, and this, it is was the twin, right? yeah. and this is the new one. So yeah. what, what, what was it like and what can they expect? Well, it's a boy of dream, isn't it? It's, it's, I remember the days of waking up and watching the, the, the cup final all the way through Saturday. And uh, to play, I haven't had the chance to play there in front of over 90,000 supporters you know I think Birmingham, Birmingham was empty 
Uh, Lisa might not agree, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I think most I'm, people I'm, were there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it was absolutely unique experience. It's hard to explain. It was just absolutely tremendous. Well, the and pinnacle of their, their careers. Well. Without they might not get there again. Yeah. And right up to date, uh, Dave, um, I know you're involved in a lot of charity work. What, what, are, you, what are you doing right now and, and looking yeah. ahead to the, to the near future? Well, I own my own business and I'm involved with various projects. But what's really prevalent and really taken off significantly, and it's only through the World Cup. I took my son and my, and my son's friend to the World Cup. And yeah. well, they're, there yeah. for, they're there for Ronaldo and <laughs> Messi and so forth. But within that time there, I had the opportunity to uh, visit a couple of the favelas. Right. Wow. Yes. I'd love to see yeah. So we went to one specific favela. Um, and we, once we got in there, we saw the deprivation. You know, there were about 15 to 20 children and there was a coach there and I had a translator and what have you. And I saw my son and he was a night trainer, night socks, night kit, you know, and then he had, he had, he saw on the other side, you had him playing and interacting without understanding each other, you know, and the camaraderie was there. And um, I spoke to the coach and he's talked about uh, uh, the, the neglect and what was happening within the favela. And as we were leaving, my son said to me, looked up at me, and he's eight at the time, Daddy, what are we going to do for help? Wow. Yeah. And, and it, you know, I started welling up. And I said, son, I don't know, but we're going to do something. OK. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to get you back on. Mm. And, and you can update us on what, what's happening out there, because I know you, there's still a lot to tell. As always, time just beats us, guys. No, no, Thank no, you no, very no. much to Lisa, as always. Thank you. Dave, thank you for coming thank on. You. And Gary, thank you. Um, that's it. That's full time on Extra Time. See you soon. <laughs>